1 Samuel chapter number 24. I want to start with verse number 1, and then we're going to read down just a little bit. Uh, any visitor here this morning, uh, sometimes we're not often uh, enough here to tell, brother, and God bless the visitors. We're glad that you're here. Uh, amen. And get under the spout where the glory comes out. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Woo. 1 Samuel chapter 24 and verse number 1 says, And it came to pass when Saul was returned from following the Philistines, that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all of Israel. That's 3,000 coming against David, his son-in-law. Amen. More like a son outlaw to him. 3,000 men. That's a lot of investment. That's a lot of chasing. And so when he did, he went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. The rocks of the wild goats. And he came to the sheep coats, by the way, was a cave. And Saul went in to cover his feet. And David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day which the Lord said unto thee. Now, once again, I want you to notice, amen, that the Lord is capitalized. Amen. Maybe not on the screen, but in the scripture. Amen. The Lord, L-O-R-D, is capitalized. That's not Adonai in translation. That's yud Vavhe, vav the tetragrammaton, or the four-letter name of God, when it's all capitals in the KJV. Simply telling me, amen, that even the men of David are invoking, amen, the name of the Lord in their sincerity in this situation. Amen. Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him as it seemed good unto thee. They're even, as it were, quoting scripture, amen, to the man that killed Goliath. Amen. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privily. And it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him. His heart smote him. Brother, something happened. He was convicted in the midst of all that because he had cut off King Saul's skirt. Amen. And he said unto his men, now watch what David does. He uses the capitals again. He's putting the name of the Lord on the line in his sincerity. And the Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, unto Saul. Here it is again, the Lord's anointed. Somebody say anointed. To stretch forth an hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of, third time, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yehovah. And so David stayed his servants with these words and suffered them not to rise against the king Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. And David rose afterward and went out of the cave and cried unto Saul, saying, My Lord, the king. Amen. When Saul looked upon him or behind him, excuse me, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. And there was this verbal exchange. And then it brought it to the end of the chapter. But if I could, on these terse verses here, amen, looking at the word of the Lord, I'd like to preach in your hearing. Treach, but I'm not sure if it's... Sunday morning teaching or Sunday evening preaching. Pray. We'll just do both. Is that all right? Amen. But if I could entitle it simply, The Secret of the Sweet Perfume. The Secret of the Sweet Perfume. Hallelujah. Could you say that with me? The Secret of the Sweet Perfume. Could you take that Bible, even while it's open, could you put it to your heart right now? And could somebody just begin to pray with this preacher? Father, we thank you for your word. Amen. For being so benevolent to us. Amen. Thank you for blessing us and allowing us to come to the house of the Lord to receive what we have need of God. Amen. We don't want to leave thirsty. We don't want to leave hungry. But after righteousness, we seek. Amen. We thank you, Lord. We've sung, we've, we've played, but now we pray. Help us, melt us, mold us. Touch us all in this house at harvest, we ask. In Jesus' name, we pray. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. Woo, everybody shout, in Jesus' name. Could you place your Bible on the pew next to you? Could you clap your hand under the Lord one more time? Come on, somebody bless the blesser Woo, in this house. Praise God. Could you do that just a little longer in the house of the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Look at your neighbor right now and tell him, amen, I'm not sitting down on that preacher today. Could you do it? <clears throat> amen. If you said it, you may be seated. Amen. If not, stand up and try it again. Praise the Lord. Ooh, somebody might want to wake that fellow up right there. Praise the Lord. Ooh, amen. <laughs> if you can't worship in the back right now, please move to the front. And if you can't worship in the front, please move to the back. But find some place you can magnify the Lord with me and exalt his name together. Thanks again, Pastor. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your kindness. And I know we're the kind of evangelist that likes to climb the wall and bite the ceiling just a little bit. Amen. But I pray that the Holy Ghost would slip a splinter in somebody's soul that just demands attention in your heart today. That you could take somebody... Amen. Along with you, say my, amen, didn't our bones burn like fire shut up in our bones? Didn't, didn't it burn in our hearts today? Hallelujah. I'm no holy Joe from Kokomo, brother. I can't even cross my T's correctly sometimes or dump my eyes. I don't know all my isms and schisms. I, I don't know all my, uh, amen, homonyms or my synonyms. And again, brother, I don't even have all my m &Ms. Amen. But I believe the Lord's going to touch somebody today. How many believe that with me? Praise God. I'm going to dance in advance. I'm going to believe the Lord for the miracle before it falls. Come on, I'm going to hear the wind before it blows. The rain, hallelujah, is falling in the house. <clears throat> so just a little historicity that's happening in the word of the Lord. I, I, I want to bring you, and I don't want to lose you, amen, in the quagmire of detail today. But if I could, I want to... Just look at the different instances within the scriptures. And we could take all day long talking about the mixtures and the apothecary and how they mixed it, amen, in Old Testament, New Testament times. Amen. These different uh, incenses, these perfumes, these substances, amen, that went medicinally. And not just that, but to make bad breath smell better, as it were. There's a lot of mixtures within the scripture, but my mind goes just a little bit, if I could, to the book of Ezra. And you don't have to turn there, but Ezra chapter 7. And if I could start with verse 21, and I, even I, or Taxerxes, the king, you make a decree to all the treasures which are beyond the river. Amen. That whosoever or whatsoever, Ezra the priest. Now, this was the time of exile. <laughs> Amen. They're in exilic times. And so Artaxerxes is simply saying, wait a minute, I'm going to restore to the children of the Lord, amen, that which is belonging to them. And he says to the Ezra the priest, remember Ezra builds the temple, Nehemiah the wall. Ezra the temple, Nehemiah the wall. But to Ezra he says... Amen. The law of the God of heaven shall require of you. It shall be done speedily. The king saying, I want to send this to you fast. I mean like fast mail. Praise God. Amen. FedEx. Uh, praise God. Uh, UPS. Uh, uh, USPS. Sometimes it's snail mail. But brother, amen. He said, I'm going to send it fast. And unto 100 talents of silver, unto 100 measures of wheat, unto 100 baths of wine, to 100 baths of oil, amen, and salt without prescribing how much, amen. Somebody say wheat, wine, and oil. <laughs> Could you say it again, wheat, wine, and oil. Brother, he's going to send all the wheat, wine, and oil according to the measurement that's there. Here's a heathen king that's blessing spiritual people. Brother, he might have a patch on one eye and a hook on the other. I don't know if he's Captain Hook. But this guy, amen, is a heathen king saying, I'm going to bless the king's kids. Yes. Says, I'm going to give you a, a hundred of wine, a hundred of wheat, a hundred of oil. But this is the part I like. And salt without prescribing how much. He didn't put a cap on the salt. He said salt, in other words, brother, makes you thirsty. Salt is a preservative. Salt makes you long for more. So here's a heathen king that says, I'm going to give you all of these substances, but I'm not going to cap off that which makes you thirsty for more. So if you want some more, <laughs> amen, all you got to do is ask, and I'm going to give it to you as fast as I can. 
Brother, if the heathen king can do that today, how much more does the king of kings want to pour out a, a, a blessing to somebody? Amen. Ask what you will and it shall be done. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Oh, somebody say yes. Look to your neighbor, say yes. Hallelujah, brother. I'm sorry I feel about as hyper as a cat on a hot tin roof right now. Amen. But help this preacher a moment. I'm talking about mixtures. Somebody say mixtures. Somebody say he knows how to fix the mix. Let's look at it. Can I go just a little further? Is this okay? Is this okay, pastor? It's okay with him, so it don't matter what you all think. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's look at it today, brother. I turn to Jeremiah. Again, you don't have to turn there. Amen. The screen team is going to put it up. Amen. But Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 20. This is familiar scripture. The harvest is past. The summer is ended and we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people and my hurt, I am black. In other words, brother, he has ashes on his head. You can see, amen, the, the, the streaks of tears that have went down on his blackened face of ashes. And astonishment have taken hold on me. This is Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. He said, my eyes are like fountains. Is there no balm in Gilead? How many of you have heard of that? Amen. Is there no physician there? Then why is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Brother, I'm no archaeologist altogether, but that's one of my candy sticks. And in archaeology, brother, they literally believe they had found, amen, Gilead. They dug into the mound and found out the layers of civilizations and empires. And what they had found that was so statistically shocking is that there was more pottery there than the common city of the same size and value. As a matter of fact, brother, 10,000 more jars with handles and maybe lids, and they found residue on the bottom which would denote finding, amen, a particular balm. They've come to the conclusion that what they had found in abundance is the literal city of Gilead, which Jeremiah mentioned. Woo, somebody say hallelujah. Can, can somebody say Wow. Can you say that backwards? Hallelujah. Well, amen. That went over like a flock of dogs. Praise God. <laughs> but where are you, Brother Nala? Amen. I'm simply saying, amen. Here's a man of God that's weeping. And so he relates in the natural. Amen. If it's God's nature to give us more than what we ask for, even medicinally in the natural, he simply said, is there no Johnson and Johnson band-aids in the medicine cabinet? Why are we whining and crying, needing healing, amen, when the healer is here, is what he's saying. And he says, if there's enough in the natural, how much more should there be in the spiritual flow, amen, that's coming from heaven? Woo! Come on, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. <coughs> Woo! Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. I pray, amen. Is this my amen section right here? Woo! Can somebody give me a denominal nod? I need something out there. Hallelujah. Woo, somebody say yes. I'm just, try, I'm just trying to show you. Just a couple of instances, brother, of the mixture that's within the word of the Lord. I could go deeper. I could go, and we could go together to Ecclesiastes. Amen. Where it says it's flies that make, amen, the apothecary, it's mixture, stink. Amen. So there's an apothecary mixture there. Bad influence makes the mixture stink. I could go all the way to the New Testament. I don't know, brother, how she made it through the ADT system. I'm not sure how she made it through the metal detectors. But here's a lady that brought the box, the box, and broke it before the Lord and gave everything that she had. And the perfume filled the room. And it changed her life forever. Woo! But I don't want a little dabble, do you? Hallelujah. Amen. I want something that fills the room with my praise. I want to make a difference that the Messiah can tell. So I'm just talking about mixtures. Somebody say mixtures. Amen. And what's happening there. And I, I brought those up, but I could have skipped all of that because I want to get to this. Amen. Can I take your hand of imagination? Can I walk down the avenue of inspiration just for the moment? And I want to bring you, amen, all the way back to this 1 Samuel 24. Can I go back to the terse verse in text? The story is this, and 
I, I thank the Lord, brother. En Gedi, this place so called En Gedi, is a national park in Israel today. As much as we can, we take our tour people there. If you would happen to go with us, amen, you would go to this place that we're preaching about right now. One of the most beautiful places in Israel. But let me back up. Let me just roll this back just a little bit. We come to the time of David. Amen. It's dry. It's dusty. He's on the run. And he comes to En Gedi. En Gedi is like a truck stop of the time. It's like the pilot of a love station. And he comes to rest with his men. Now, if I could just make this front area the Dead Sea just for a little bit. How many have ever been to the Dead Sea? How many have studied the Dead Sea? How many know what the Dead Sea is? Amen. Three people. That's all right. Amen. The Dead Sea. There, as a matter of fact, brother, there are specific seas in Israel. You have the Mediterranean Sea. You have the Sea of Galilee. Then you have, amen, the Dead Sea. And then you have the Red Sea. Well, the Sea of Galilee is just more like a, a large freshwater lake. So it's more like... Mediterranean, Dead Sea, Red Sea. So I like to call it, amen, the Med Dead Red. <laughs> and so in all of that, amen, this Dead Sea is 3,000 feet below sea level. Brother, it's the lowest place on earth. We actually go floating in the water. I'm not a swimmer, so I thank God I can float. <laughs> amen. We spend the night there. There's a hotel. It's just awesome. Amen. It's full. It's 10 times more saline, dense, Amen. Then the richest sea or ocean in the world. It just, it's, brother, you can read your newspaper, amen, while you're floating on the water. You can be sucking on a Georgian, amen, Arnold Palmer tea. <laughs> well, praise God. Caught your attention there. Hallelujah. Amen. But <laughs> there it is. The, 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 brother, they even take Israeli jets. I remember as we were on the balcony with our people. Amen. It was at night and we're sharing our fruits. Sister and Alec and I are the hosts, so they gave us a bigger room and some food and amen and some good clean water. And so we've invited everyone over. Come on, a lot of young people come with us. It's just awesome. And they're singing and we're talking, and all of a sudden there's an Israeli jet because they do maneuvers over the lowest part of the earth. It's the it's the only place, amen, where they can fly below sea level. <laughs> but there comes the F-16s or the F-35s. <laughs> And, brother, they rip across, amen, right there. You can see the light, it's flashing. Brother, we could see another light. I said, there's another one coming. The light's flashing. over. Come on. It comes again, and, brother, it wakes you up. And, brother, I felt like David, amen, with Goliath. Go get him. Hallelujah. Woo. Yeah, somebody say amen. And so with all of that, amen, you've got the Dead Sea. And on that side of the Dead Sea, you can see across on the Jordanian side, Amen. The place where the Moabites used to dwell. It's where Ruth came from. Amen. Mount Horeb, where Moses, amen, looked across the sea, the promised land. You could go back to the Jabbok River on the other side. It's more north of there, but that's on the other side or Jordanian side. On this side, brother, there is, amen, Masada on this side. Anybody heard of Masada? It's a plateau, brother, where the Herodian palace was. They even revolted, amen, in 130-something A.D. with the Bar Kokhva, amen, revolt. And they, they used it as a grandstand until the Romans could build a ramp and take them down. Amen. On the other side of that, amen, on the same Israeli side is where the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered called Qumran, which validate the Bible that we have opened on this pulpit today. Woo, somebody say yeah. yeah. If, you th if you think serving God is just some lame brain, limp-wristed, jelly backbone kind of thing, check your brains in at the door, sit on a pew like a dumb box of rocks, you got another thing coming. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Woo. Amen. It's a good life for living for God. Amen. It's wisdom. Come, let us reason together. <laughs> oh, my, my. I feel a little rapture coming on. Praise the Lord. What are you saying, preacher? All of that, and in the midst of that, I just wanted to paint you a picture, is this place called En Gedi in the middle. It goes up about an eighth of a mile, quarter of a mile, into the dusty area of the, of, of the, the, the reddish-looking cliffs of the land of Judea, of the wilderness of Judea. But right there at the top of it is 
a 30-foot waterfall that falls, and that water trickles down, and this is the path that we take to get to that waterfall. And you can see the Dead Sea way down below, but it trickles down. It flows down. Sometimes, brother, to get to it, we're up here on the rocks, and there's a nice metal handle, and you're like 30 feet, amen, a side of a cliff, and you've got to pray that you don't fall. We take everybody that wants to go on it, hallelujah, amen. And then you're walking on flatlands, which is almost like the Amazon jungle, and you're walking through a green tunnel, amen, from stone to stone as the water's flowing in between these rocks. It is a, a delightful place, brother. You talk about differentiation and variation. But this is the place that David was. This is the place. This is the love truck stop that he says, I'm going to relax a little bit. This is his sabbatical. And so he comes, brother, with his men. And all of a sudden, I'm just going to hasten. All of a sudden, here comes Saul in the scene. And Saul, amen, thinking he's alone and David's men are nowhere to be found, comes to the same truck stop and they can't find David's truck because it's parked in a place they can't see. He walks into the cave and David's in there and the men of David, I can see David now. <laughs> Get out. Come on, man. And they're like wallpaper against the cave's wall. Don't move. That's King Saul. And David's men are saying, this is your moment. This is your opportunity. They even use scripture. They even invoke the name of God. Go get them right now. <laughs> and David, I can see it. He puts his hand in his white knuckles. Pulls that sword. I'm and something happens, brother. Instead, he slides into first base and cuts off the hem. <laughs> Amen, and walks away, as it were, backs out of the situation with the hem of Saul's robe. The Bible says David's heart smites him. Conviction comes. Why? Because the hem identifies who they are, brother. Amen. Brother, we wear it on our shoulders, sergeant stripes, colonel stripes, whatever it is. But back then, the more embroidery, the more color and sequence they had on the hem, the more power, rank, and authority. That's why the lady, lady reached out and touched the hem of Jesus' garment because all power in heaven and earth, amen, was tied into the hem of the Messiah that day. Amen. So David's heart smote him. It's almost as if he killed the king anyhow at the last part of that very chapter, brother, we didn't go to it. It simply says, David says, or Saul says, now I know, David, you're going to become the king of Israel. Why? Because the kingly identification was resting in his hands. I brought you that picture to bring it to this saints of God. David said, I won't touch God's anointed David uses anointed of the Lord. Amen. I can't do anything against the anointing of God. Amen. What are you saying? The oil, the mixture that's there. David understood how to handle the mixture. David understood, amen, how to apply the anointing. He had every right, as it were, to, amen, take Saul down that day. Who wouldn't? You're being chased from javelins and spears for months and years. What in the world are we going to do with the witch's win? But David said, not on my watch. This is the Lord's doing. He'll do it in due season and at due time. I'm just simply preaching today. Does anybody know how to handle the anointed mixture today? Does anybody know how to put the pedal to the metal? Amen. Or to thwart, amen, that moment and say, God's got this. Brother, in a world that's gone crazy, somebody needs to know how to manage the miracle mixture on the inside. Come on, I need more Holy Ghost than I've ever needed before. I need to say, God, I need the power of God like I've never needed it before. Woo, somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say secret of the sweet perfume. Secret of the sweet perfume. Where you headed, preacher, with this? And I know I gave it an odd title. Some of you are kerfuffled in your kafufa right now. It's a little confusing. <laughs> Thank God. Anybody with me in section C over here? Hallelujah. Where are you at, preacher? I'm simply saying this, Pastor, amen, is that if you take this moment, and I'm going to hasten, I'm going to get to the cross so you know what, exactly what I'm talking about. Amen, if you bring it years ahead, <laughs> thousands of years, past Calvary, past Pentecost, somewhere around 300, 400 A.D. was a city that was created right near En Gedi. I've never been there, 
But our tour guide, brother, sent me some pictures. And this is one of the reasons I'm preaching this today. He sent me something. I thought, wow, why haven't I seen this? They uncovered a city of En Gedi that was there, amen, not in David's time, but about three, 400 A.D., somewhere around Constantine. Some of you know what that's about, 325, etc. Right there, they built a city. It was covered, but now they uncovered it, and you can visit this city. What's so odd about this city, and please don't lose me with this archaeology. I'm not trying to throw stones. Amen, but you got to see this. When they uncovered it, they found one of the biggest synagogues per capita they've ever found. Brother, in, in a, 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 a Podoc town of maybe 500 people, they had a synagogue there that was like as if it were from Jerusalem. And in that, in that synagogue, they found, amen, the, the ark. How many know what the ark is? That's where they put the Torah scrolls. And they still do that today. And it's as close as they can get it to Jerusalem. So they found it. They knew what it was when they uncovered it. It's, wow, this is the ark. This is where they put the Torah scrolls. How do you put a huge synagogue in that kind of a city? Just a little city. I've looked at some of the pictures, brother. I think I took a little bit of a mobile tour through, and I thought, wow, and we're going to bring the people there next time because there's something significant about this. Never been there. I almost kicked myself because we hadn't been there. Amen. And here it is. This is what's intriguing, and this is where I wanted to lead you today. They found under the ark, amen, four stanzas in the Hebrew of the 300-400 A.D. era. Three stanzas there. Now, brother, I'm no holy Joe, but I can read some Hebrew. Amen. And I'm here to tell you, that might be a little difficult to read. Amen. It's from the time of Jesus or just thereafter. It's not modern, modern, but yet you, I could pick up some, but brother, there it is. Can I say it in English? I'm not going to read it in Hebrew to you. Somebody said, oh, that's good. <laughs> hey, ma'am, but can I, how, how many want to know what it says? How many would like to read with me a document that's almost 2,000 years old they discovered? Amen. The first thing that was said, amen, the first thing that was said in all of this is do not start quarrels on the inside of the synagogue. <laughs> In other words, zip instead of zigzag. Oh, somebody with me, praise God. You know, brother, I thought, hey, amen, he's on the line. You're talking about Jesus on the line. It's more like he's on the cell today. Hallelujah. Amen. But there it is. Just don't let the tongue go. They're saying that don't start quarrels. And that's, that's a good piece of information. As a matter of fact, if I could back up just a moment to say that my son and I were visiting in Springfield, Missouri. We're down there for revival, vacation, whatever it is. It's one of the biggest Christian bookstores you've ever. And it's called The Redeemed. If you haven't seen it, amen, you need to see it. There it was. I'm gathering books, old books, used books, new books. My son and I love books. And so there it is. And, and Bibles, did not Matter, but I got probably 30 Bibles, but it don't matter. Hey, Amen. How many Bibles does a preacher need? Just one more. Ooh, how many guitars does a guitar player need? Just one more guitar. Hey, Amen. How many are with me today? <laughs> My wife knows that. Hey, Amen. I got two of them, two of them in her living room. <laughs> you know that's right. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. How many with the preacher? Praise God. Go ahead. Wake them up again, sister. I need, I need some help here. Hey, Amen. Stick with me, brother. Hey, Amen. Whoa. whoa. Watch this. We, we finally found a book. And that book was called the Infographic Bible. What is infographic? It has all kinds of graphs in it from Genesis to Revelation. And in there, it visually explains what happens. I'm narrowing it down to a two-hour session here to two minutes. We go to the page where all the sacrifices in the Old Testament. How many wonder, how does this work? All these sacrifices. Well, it breaks it down. The one that's the most sacrifice is when God was persuaded to bless Israel instead of to curse Israel because they sacrificed seven bloody bullocks and seven bloody rams. It took 14 bloody animals to turn God's curse to a blessing or to make this prophet instead of curse to bless Israel. It took the most sacrifice in one moment in scripture to cause somebody's tongue to say good things instead of bad things. Wow. So don't think your tongue is just an instrument to do whatever you want to do. 
Amen. James talks about it as being a fire. Amen. You need a bride for it. Get a bridle. You need a rudder. Amen. That's what it, it controls the whole ship. Is this okay? Look at your neighbor. Say, what you say about me matters. <laughs> Some of you are not going to go there today. What are you saying? Brother, the least, the least sacrifice in that infographic Bible is to persuade God to go to battle with you. One little yearling or suckling lamb, just a little suckling lamb is all it took, and he'll go to battle before you. It is God's nature, brother, to fight you. The battle's not yours, just the victory. Yeah. Hallelujah. But I'm just showing, brother, the most was because of the tongue. The least was because God is for you. Wow. Don't gossip in church. First thing. Second thing, I'm going to get to the fourth because the fourth is this message. The second thing was is don't quarrel or gossip outside of the synagogue to the goyim. The goyim or the goy, which is the Gentiles. Don't bring gossip. They don't want to hear about your pastor. They don't want to know what the sister pastor's doing. Just, they don't matter. They don't care. We don't have to bring this outside of the church. You know what she did to me? No, they don't want to know that. Pray for them instead. Praise God. I know, brother, us redheads have got to stick together, right? Praise. Well, it used to be red. Praise God. <laughs> now it's strawberry silver. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! There's still victory in the camp. I know I may have lost 10% of it, but if I could have you just for a moment. Can I have 10 more minutes, brother? I'm almost there. But you've got to see this. I know I'm doing a lot of build up here. Amen. That, that's the second thing. Don't gossip inside. Don't gossip outside. And the third one, real quickly, is thou shalt not, don't steal. What? What in the world is that with all of that? Don't steal in the synagogue. Who's going to steal? Let me have your Bible. No. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to do that. There's the reason. And the fourth tells us why the first three were mentioned. They discovered, and, and please, I hope this makes sense to you. But they discovered this. Amen is keep the secret, this is it, scholars came together, people that were studying homiletically, exegetically, amen, brother, archaeologists, they came and said, whoa, they said, whoa, we've been looking for this for years, and when they, it says, keep the secret of the city, was the fourth stanza, Keep the secret of the city. What are you talking about, preacher? What's the secret of the city? They come to realize this. Nobody could afford a synagogue that size in a small city unless they had some of this. No, they begin to understand you don't have to steal because there's plenty here. You can also understand, brother, they wanted them to not, shh, don't say too much inside, don't say too much outside. Brother, it is those archaeologists and those commentators that simply say they probably found the place that they've been looking for. Somewhere around the Dead Sea, and according to secular writings, somebody was making perfume. Even Cleopatra in Egypt, in some of her writings, says, I've got the best Ralph Lauren you can find, but I found it. On the perimeter of the Dead Sea. And brother, if you look at the Dead Sea, there's nothing green around it really except for in the desert. And they had a city. And it's this city that most likely, 99.9% .9 sure, that this is the place that grew the right mixtures, that grew the right plants, that grew the right perfume, that grew the right flowers to mix it with the apothecary so that the best essence of perfume came from that house. And the world was purchasing that. No wonder that said, shh, keep the secret of the city. Don't reveal to anybody else, amen, the apothecary mix. Don't tell them about our fields. Don't tell them about our gardens. Don't tell them about our grapes. Don't tell them about the vineyards and the wine presses. Amen. Keep the secret of the city and you'll be satisfied where you are. Really, I, I preached all of that to say this. We have the best mixture on this side of heaven and it's called the Holy Ghost and fire. And the devil 
devil wants to exploit your mixture. He wants to find out what you're made of. He wants to add to it or take away. He wants to make you something that you are not supposed to be. Come on, somebody. Keep the secret of the sweet perfume. You keep you keep the Holy Ghost in fire. Come on, somebody. Let it be shut up in your bones. Woo. I don't need some cheap substitute. I don't need some amen mixture that's almost pure or almost there. Come on, I want to be prayed up and paid up and ready to go up. Hallelujah. I've got to have the right mixture. Woo. I've got to know the character of Jesus Christ. I've got to have it right on my heart. It's not just for your generation. It's for your generation. We just had three grandbabies. Two of them were born in August 19th on the same day. The third one was born two weeks later. <laughs> you talk about trucking for truth. Brother, we were zigzagging across the country preaching in between three granddaughters. <laughs> I know they want pink Feels and thrills, but daddy, papa's going to give them chocolate trucks and trains. Praise God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. But I'm here to tell you, brother, it's no more than anything or anybody else except that there's a greater desire to pour into their lives like we did to our kids. I'm thankful for our three children. They're married to great young people. Amen. My daughters are in the ministry. My son is a pastor in North Carolina. Come on, somebody. I believe they're going to pour it into their kids. Somebody's going to watch out for the secret of your city. Come on, generation to generation. Brother Somebody's got to make it up in their mind. I'm not here to just exploit it. Come on. Protect the sweet spot that you and Jesus have. If it's your closet of prayer, I'm never going to let the enemy invade that pristine place. I can't do it. Amen. I can't, I can't purchase a slice of Laodicea. And think that I can make it. Brother, I know I'm going back to the five foolish and virgins. And amen. The mentality of the fifth fool. But something tells me. Amen. That I've got to get a hold of this concept. I've got to be. Amen. A watchman on the wall. For the mixture. In a world that's got it gone mad. How do I manage the mixture on the inside? God, let me be a David that deciphers. Whether I should go ahead or pull back. Help me in this generation, and when I'm walking and talking for you, amen, to be Christian apostolic ready, amen, in the hour of temptation. Hallelujah. Anybody with me in the back? Anybody with me in the cheap seats? Anybody with me right here? Somebody's got to keep the secret of the sweet perfume that's happening in our lives. Brother, this is not, this is not so much can I trust the Lord message. Please, I'm not going to preach real, real long. Can I have seven and a half more minutes? Thank you, sir. Amen. I, 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 I know. This is not a message of can I trust the Lord. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Amen. We can trust him. I mean, you know, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. You can trust him. Yes. Sir, you can bank on him for tomorrow. Yes. You can bank on him for next, amen, 10 years, brother. You can, you can thank God for that. This message is not a message of can I trust him? This is a message. Is can he trust me? Can God trust you with the mixture he's given you, brother? To protect it and make sure that you got the secret. Shh. Don't just exploit it. I'm not telling you don't witness, you don't hang, amen, door hangers or knobs and, amen, teach Bible studies. You do all of that. But I'm here to tell you, you, you can't just say, well, this is, you, you're never a Samson who she keeps, <laughs> she keeps hammering away, hammering, hammering away at Samson. It's not in the cords, sir. It's, it's not in the reeds. Where is your strength? It's a secret. And he lets it happen, brother. He lets it unfold. But telling him, it, telling her it's in the covenantal locks of his hair. And she finds his sweet spot. Finds the bullseye. Finds the mixture. Amen, that's there. And now he's lost out with God. Because he just 
nonchalantly didn't care of who knew about how do Jesus and I operate. I'm sorry, brother, I know I'm a little biased, and I've, I've got my way, you've got your way, but I've got my time in the morning, you've got your time in the morning, brother, whenever you drink coffee. I know you get up earlier than I, amen, that means to tell me you're praying for me before I'm praying for you. <laughs> but, but I'm here to tell you, saints, no matter what it is, you've got to have the attitude that says there's nobody that has a relationship like me and Jesus. That's my secret. That's my sweet perfume. And I want my worship, I want my servitude, my attitude, my living, giving, and loving to be the mixture that only comes from above. And I'm not there. Amen. It's not for sale. I bought it, and it's not for sale. Young people, you've got to say, it's not for sale. You can't just open up pornography magazines. You can't just overdo playing games. You cannot just read wicked romance novels that lead your mentality and wandering into the wrong direction. Is this okay, somebody? Hallelujah. We can't just browse around with the things that the world has for us. Amen. What does the Bible say? Coming out from among them, my people, be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I'll receive you. Brother, you all sang a song about holiness today. Thank God he's a holy God on a holy throne. Woo! I've got to keep the mixture safe. Flies make the mixture of the apothecary stink. And I've got to make sure instead it's like the lady that breaks it all and said, it belongs to you. Whew. Can I, Exodus 30, I don't have time to go there, but just, I, I praise God. I mean, maybe I will. Amen. How, how many with the preacher? Can, can, I've got only five minutes left. Hallelujah. Amen. But Exodus 30 says, verse 22, Moreover the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto thee principal spices of pure myrrh. Amen. And, 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 and uh, uh, 500 shekels and of sweet cinnamon, half so much, e even 250 shekels and of sweet calamus. And, amen. And, and cassia and olive oil. There were these five ingredients, 18 pounds, 9 pounds, 9 pounds, 18 pounds, and one and a half gallons to make the anointing oil in the mixture. Insomuch that even the next mixture of perfume that was the incense and all that it entailed could not be applied to strangers lest they be cut off from Israel. You couldn't exploit the mixture. Amen. When God specific, specifically, amen, had a purpose, amen, to blend into your soul. Whew. It's not for sale. I can't let the enemy find the bullseye. I, 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 I can't do it, sister. Got, young people, God bless these young people. Hallelujah. I, mean, I, I can't do it. It's got to be something that it's in between me and the Lord. Here's my flavor, and I want you to savor it, Lord. I want to touch you as you touch me. We are standing on holy ground. Yes. Can I begin to close, brother, with this? And I don't know how long you keep, amen, people on. Uh, is it afternoon already? It's probably afternoon. Praise God. Amen. It's, it's early morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. I, I know I'm going to become part of a rock pile, but here we go. Can I just say this? Amen. That. There was the coat of many colors that Joseph had. And in Hebrew, it is called ketonet pasim. Ketonet pasim. I won't have you repeat that, but amen. It simply means not necessarily the coat of many colors, though it may have been, and most likely it was with the embroidery and everything, might have had a coat of many colors. But ketonet pasim means a long flowing garment like a prince would wear. Of the king. Look it up in Hebrew. It's, it's simply amazing. It comes to the very length of the wrists all the way to the ankles. It's a flowing garment. It just flowed in the wind. No wonder they could say, hey amen, here comes the dreamer. They recognized the coat. It did show in some senses favoritism for this son. Katanot pasim. The only other time, brother, that that same Hebrew word is found in the scripture. How many want to know what it is? It's in Tamar, the half-sister of Amnon, and Amnon degraded her. She was a princess of the king because her daddy was David. Two times, only two times, Katanot Pasim, the coat of royalty, probably full of color, 
that they could tell even from a distance was in Joseph and Tamar, brother and sister as it were, male and female, prince and princess. The target for the enemy is to strip us of our spiritual vitality. And both garments were torn, bloodied, and battered. And the devil would like it no more than to take us and to shred us, brethren, and to take the holiness and take the God thing that's in our soul and dilute it to something that no longer is the substance that it was intended to be. Don't, don't exploit it in the church. Don't exploit it outside of the church. You don't have to grab on somebody else's coattail. You don't have to steal. You can get this anointing all by yourself. And for heaven's sake, keep the secret of the city that's set on a hill. Keep it. Brother, our charge and challenge for Harvest Ministries today is to don't leave here for about making your personal calling and election sure to say, I'm keeping the secret of this city right now in my soul. How many have the Holy Ghost in this house? Do you have the Holy Ghost? Evidence, speaking in tongues, loving God. I'm not going to exploit it, brother. Amen. As he leads me, as the comforter leads me and guides me, that's what I've got to have. Sister and I'll just kind of get ready. Abraham, Abraham raised 318 in his own tent, it says, in the household of faith. 318 is he brought those boys with him to go get Lot that was stolen by the enemy. How many remember that? 318 in Gematria in Hebraics equals the same numerical value as the word comforter. Abraham brought the comforter with him into the battle. Not one man was lost. And if we're going to win the battle, we've got to let the Holy Ghost, the anointing, the mixture lead us. And not one man will be lost in the battle of it all. Could somebody just simply stand to your feet and lift your hands unto the Lord and somebody begin to talk to Jesus right where you are. I'm not just trying to give you information. I'm not just trying to bore you today. Hallelujah. But I'm simply saying somebody's going to keep the secret of the city. Hallelujah. Pastor. Pastor, I'll, I, again, I may have mentioned if I'm repetitious, if I'm redundant, forgive me. Amen. But I love es our, uh, eschatology. That's the study of end times. Ever since 77, over 40 years, I've been studying end time. Where are we living end time wise? And I'm not here to preach pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. I'm just simply saying he's coming. If I've ever seen a day when the mark of the beast is ready, when the isolation is taking place, where the program of the cabal is moving forward, we need to be praying, amen, for every nation, not just Ukraine. I was in Russia two times. My heart goes out to those boys. But are probably not wanting to do what they're doing right now. Somebody hear me, hallelujah. We are literally, and I could talk about the Shemitah. I could talk about the year of Jubilee. Brother, some men say that it's probably going to be this year, next year. There's something very important about 25. Apophis, a meteorite, according to NASA, is coming April 13th of 29. That if it hits the world, it's going to shake the globe, literally. Since we're living in the decade of destiny, whether it be the one, we don't have much time left. And I'm not here to say, God, I'm going to let a service slip by. I'm going to let a prayer meeting slip by. Amen. No, i got to keep the secret of the city. The devil didn't give it to me, and he can't take it away. Now, right now, right now, if I could just challenge everyone. I want to challenge everyone. Just could you close your eyes just for a moment. Just for a moment in this house. Oh, I feel Holy Ghost here. Somebody's going to take their, th somebody's going to take their 318. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. And I wonder, just every eye closed, please, on to the one next to you. Could you lift your hand and say, Brother Nala, amen. I want, I want the Lord to trust me. I want the Lord to trust me. There you are, sis. <laughs> That's it, sir. Come on. There's still hands. There's still hands. I want the, I want to be able for the Lord. God bless you, young man. Praise God. 
Amen. Amen. And I, I, don't, I don't think I need a long altar call. Amen. I, I don't think, I think there's enough conviction here. I think there's enough, amen, uh, uh, unrest in my soul. I wonder if I could open this altar up for somebody that just wants to come and say, God, I know you trust me, but I've come to tell you, amen, that you can trust me more than ever before. I know can trust you but I want you to know that you can trust me as much as is within me amen I want to say God I'm keeping the secret of the city I'm keeping the city more come on I want more God bless you, young lady. God bless you, sir. This altar's open. I wonder if you could come from the back. Those that lifted their hands, I wonder if you could consider finding that place to pray right now. Come on. 